The environment used by NSRC is mainly Cisco. We will discuss Cisco configuration essentials in the next few slides. We'll be talking about components of Cisco routers and switches running Cisco IOS. IOS is Cisco's internet operating system and it's the software used to control the router or switch. Cisco produces other equipment running other operating systems, namely iOS XR, which is used on their high-end routers. You also have iOS XE, which is a replacement for iOS. And you have NXOS, which is used on data center and enterprise switches. Equipment from other vendors use similar concepts. Where is the configuration saved? Cisco always has two configurations, namely running configuration and the startup configuration. Running configuration is saved in the main memory of the router, and it also shows you which parameters are currently in use. It can be modified by typing the command configure terminal, and you can display the running configuration by typing show running config at the prompt. You also have the startup configuration, which is stored in NVRAM. By NVRAM, we mean non-volatile RAM, and it's loaded by the router the next time it boots. This is where the running configuration is saved, and you can look at the startup configuration by typing the command show startup config. How do you input information into the router? You can do so by using the management input sources of the Cisco router or switch. The first option is the console, which gives you direct access to the device via the serial port. It is useful for configuring brand new devices or connecting to routers after you've lost access via the network. The second option is the auxiliary port, and it's similar to the console for it's used for connecting modems and other serial devices. You can also use it for accessing other serial devices. The auxiliary port is useful as you can use it to connect a modem to give you out of band access. You also have the virtual terminals, which is the VTY, which will give you telnet or SSH access to the router. This is the typical form of use as it allows you to get access via the IP network infrastructure. How do you change the configuration of a Cisco device? Please note that commands are implemented immediately, so be very careful when typing. When working on serial console or via telnet or SSH, commands can either be copied from a text file and pasted into the terminal, or they can be copied by SCP or TFTP from a file prepared previously on an SCP or TFTP server. You have three different access modes in a router. The first one is the standard user access mode, which lets you see some of the device status. The standard user access mode is denoted by the prompt followed by the arrow key. You have the privileged user access mode, which also gives you full administrative view of the device. This mode can be accessed by typing the enable command. When you're in standard user access mode, you know you're in the privileged user access mode when you have the prompt immediately followed by the hash key. You also have the configuration mode, which can be accessed by typing the command configure terminal when you're in privileged user access mode. As you can see on the screen, you have the router prompt with config in parentheses followed by the hash key to tell you that you're in configuration mode. How do you exit configuration mode? You can exit configuration mode by typing the command end or using control Z. You can exit privilege mode by typing the command disable and you can lock off the router by simply typing exit at the router prompt. How do you save your configuration? Remember, it's very important to save your configuration to the device NVRAM after it has been updated. The device does not do it automatically, so you will have to do so by typing the command write memory in privilege mode. This command can be shortened by using the command WR, but the actual full longhand form of the Cisco command to save the configuration is copy running config startup 
config. There are many available options for saving the configuration. You can either save it locally on the device or you can save it to an external server using TFTP or SCP. To figure out the options available when using TFTP or SCP, you can simply type the command copy running config followed by the question mark. As you can see on the screen, the different options available are saving configuration to the flash or to a TFTP server. You can also use secure copy to transfer to an external file or server. You can use the memory slots available on the device, basically the external memory slots 0 and slots 1, or you can copy the running config to the startup config. As we had shown you previously, this is to save it on the NVRAM of the router, or you can copy the running configuration to a TFTP server. How do you get help on a router? Please note the question mark is used to obtain a list of commands available in your current configuration mode. As you can see on the screen, when you're in configuration mode and you type the question mark, it shows you all the different commands available. For example, you see you have AAA, which is the authentication, authorization, and accounting command, etc. How do you get online help? You can also use the question mark to see all the possible parameters to an incomplete command. As you can see on the screen, when you're in configuration mode and you would like to add a user, you simply type username followed by the question mark. This will show you that you need to complete it with a word, which is the actual username. So you would then type username, which is CND lab followed by the question mark. This will show you that you need to specify the password for the user. You would continue by typing username CND lab password followed by the secret password. You can also look at the different options available for the show command by typing show followed by the question mark. Remember, question mark will show you all the list of possible parameters to any incomplete command. How do you complete a command? You can use the tab key to complete any command. As you can see on the screen, when you type INT followed by the tab sign, it's going to complete it with interface. You can continue by typing interface FA followed by the tab sign, and this would do interface fast Ethernet 0. If you want to type the IP address, you can just simply type IP add followed by the tab sign, and then it would complete it with the command IP address. At this point, you would simply enter your IP address and the subnet mask. Please note that there are various shorthands to all the Cisco commands. iOS understands the shorthand. Complete command does not need to be typed as long as the initial characters are unique. As you can see on the screen, there's this command, int fa0 followed by ip ADD and you have an IP address 192.168.1.1 followed by the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. This is followed by the command no sh and it's followed by control z. You also see this command being typed show sh ip int br and you see the iPod as shown on the screen being showing you the details of the interface fast ethernet zero on the screen so from the above commands you realize that the full commands of the first one is int fa0 simply means interface fast ethernet zero and you're adding the ip address 192.168.1.1 with its subnet mask to interface fast ethernet zero no sh simply means no shutdown and control z gets you out of the configuration mode show ip int br simply means show ip interface brief and in this case it's showing you the fast ethernet interface of that router how do you move faster around the command line the various options available are shown on the screen. If you want to look at the command history, you can simply type the up arrow key for previous command or the down arrow key for the next command. 
when you're line editing, you can simply move the arrow key to the left to move to the left within a line or to the right to move to the right within a line. Control A will move to the beginning of a line. Control E will move to the end of a line. And Control A will delete till the end of a line. So those of you that are familiar with VI, it's a bit similar to VI with some of the editing options.